uh, so t about uh, uh, talk, you maybe what what is the subject? I think there is a general philosophy what I call from disorder to order. Maybe Ram, it will be the title of his next book of philosophy. Okay. So what is the type of pro problem? When I write this, I am thinking of people like, uh, of course, Erdős, and I would like to write also what I write to write as a Hungarian school, like people like uh, Balog, uh, <coughs> Sarkozy, Rouja, and you can add the any uh, many many names. So. Uh, you start from a sequence A included one N, and another sequence B included in one N, and I insist I shall ask no property, no property precise, but only a lower bound for cardinality of A and cardinality of B. So it's what I call disorder. Okay, so it maybe uh, contains no prime and something like that, a bad distribution in arithmetic progression. And now, how to create order? There are several possibilities. First of all, you can consider A plus B. That means the set of A plus B. Or another way of you can do also A minus B. And another way is to write AB plus 1, which is a set of AB plus 1, A. And what is the philosophy? That these two sets are certainly some order, some good behavior, so we, if you want. So, of course, I did not define what is, a, what is a good behavior. Uh, so, uh, I, I shall work about this one, okay? And uh, there are two... You see, there is a difference between the two problems because the size of elements here will be around n square, the size. And you will have something, I'd say nothing, cardinality of A, cardinality of B. And here the size will be something like N. And here the cardinality will be also... Okay, so the cardinality, be careful. I am... Uh, there is a problem of multiplicity, I forget it. So it's quite different. You see here the, 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 inter, uh, the number are rather small compared to that. In other words, here we hope the number of representation to be... Uh, bounded by one uh, on average, and this is uh, for the other ca case is completely different. Here also we will have some property. So he, uh, this is convolution. Certainly we will use property of convolution. Okay. Here certainly people when they attack that they are playing a lot with uh, large sieve. So I will. So uh, here is. So what is the order? So I would like to write down a conjecture. So, due to uh, Sarkozy and uh, Stewart. So, uh, let us write it in, uh, in a Bourbaki style. So, we will dream to ask that, to claim that in AB plus 1 there are prime, but it is silly. Suppose A and B are both odd, you are killed, there is no prime. So. It's, it tends to this property, so uh, conjecture for all epsilon positive, there exist n epsilon, n c epsilon strictly positive, such that, such that for all n greater than n power epsilon for all a and b 
included in 1n such that <coughs> cardinality of A and cardinality of B are greater than epsilon n. So here's the property. You see you have the set 1n, 1n, you take a rather dense sequence, suppose 100 uh, of the elements, and you say nothing, and, uh, and now you, you make the product then, uh, excuse me, then, uh, so that, uh, so that for all mm, the set a, b plus one, contains an element, uh, I call it n, such that the greatest prime factor, uh, so, is greater than c epsilon uh, n square, and what is this? p plus, by definition, it is the greatest supremum of p such that p divides m. So this is the greatest prime factor of the integer m. <coughs> so uh, people are not, uh, of course, it's, it's then completely uh, fool to say that uh, it contains prime. So we approach this conjecture saying that you have inside uh, an integer n of the form p multiplied by some n prime and p huge. Okay? So, uh, we may say, what about positive density? You see, positive density is uh, mandatory because an easy example you take for, you take p a prime, so I write positive density. Obligatory because an easy example you take for A the set of A such that A congruent to 1 mod P, you take a prime P, A less than capital N, you take B the set of B, B congruent to minus 1 modulo P, B less than N, and you see that the <coughs> AB plus 1, NA is congruent to zero mod p. Okay, uh, that's, that's, that's trivial. So that, that that implies that the p plus of n a a b plus one is less than n squared divided by p. And you take for p suppose uh, some function of n tending to infinity very slowly. And you, you have not the property required, so it's necessary. So what I, I shall first write what I uh, what I proved, and to give you some uh, <coughs> so here is a theorem. So there are there are a lot of questions you can ask. The method change as soon as you uh, uh, you about the density. So I write down a, a quite general theorem. So for all delta positive with zero less than delta less than one, there exists a function omega delta which goes from n to r star such that omega delta of n tends to zero as n tends to infinity, such that for every n greater than two, for all a and b included into one n with a b greater than n divided by log n power delta. So uh, in some sense, so, uh, uh, 
I take uh, two subsets which are rather uh, slightly more dense than the set of prime. And then what is the conclusion? There ex then there exists there exist a uh, C elements of A B plus one such that P plus of <coughs> C is greater than one to the power one plus cardinality of A divided by N one minus omega delta of N. So it is a So uh, I must explain uh, what is the meaning of that. So you have to take care of what is important is uh, uh, the exponent. The exponent, so what do we say? It is very nice because when, so uh, yes, when cardinality of A tends to N, the exponent tends to 2. Okay, it tends to 2. So this is almost negligible. So that means the conjecture is proved for, almost proved for very sick um, A, B, A and B. Okay? And uh, so we, of course, f for this exponent, you take the la between A and B, you take the largest one. This, uh, it works also for Suppose you take B slightly larger than uh, uh, the set of primes, then you have also the same type of exponent, almost equal to 2. So what was known before, so, uh, so the result of uh, uh, Sarkozy, Stewart, and after Matomaki, so the result is depends but what is the best they obtain is uh, something less. So you see, the, the best exponent you find in the, in the result is four thirds. So that means it's, it gave uh, some hope. I think it's uh, good improving. I, I would like also to. It, for you to taste the difficulty of the question. Only to, to, to tell you a, a problem I like, I did not work at it, but it's, uh, it may, you may think the difficulty of the problem. So when you were, when I was young, and maybe Ram also, what we call uh, in French table de multiplication, you write the number one, two, three, four, Five, six. Here also. One, two, three, four, five, six. And here, inside, you write the product. For instance, nine, eight, and so on. Okay. So, the, so, I call LV of N, so if we go up to N, like Linnik Vinogradov, Vinogradov uh, set. I don't know, it's my denomination. I, I, I read that Linnik and Vinogradov are this question. So it is a set of the product AB such that So what is the asymptotic of this LV of N? It's not an easy question. You may not think, of course, I, I, I miss completely the prime between N and N square, and it has been solved, uh, I would say, only 10 to 20 years ago, something like that. So. Uh, clever people like uh, Hall, Tenenbaum, and uh, finally Ford, 
prove something like it's very, so I, will, I must confess that, that my intuition is completely lost how to guess the order of magnitude. So they found that the, the cardinality of LV of n is something like n squared. It is not a positive proportion by div divided by log n. So I write the exponent 0 0.086. Here it's a logarithm divided by something, log log n. Okay. So you see, it's, so here is, and now uh, another question, Kuku Lopoulos, Lopoulos prove the following thing quite so he has, they have not the asymptote is of the right order of magnitude and it, the asymptote the number of prime in the linic Vinogradov set is asymptotic to n square divided what you can guess in some uh, oh, excuse me plus one plus one plus one Okay, otherwise, uh, AB prime is not an uh, interesting question. So it's something like one point so I divide by okay <coughs> and in some sense you see the thanks to Kokulopoulos the question of the greatest prime factor of AB plus 1 is solved when A equals B equals 1N. Okay? But it says nothing when the density is 0 0.9. Uh, <coughs> so how to attack this question? So some hints on the proof. So I recall that about A and B, we have no assumption. So we will use uh, at some uh, very precise moments. So we, we start what, what we call the chebyshev houlet method. So chebyshev houlet now it's Chebyshev because he was the first, uh, Chebyshev was the first to <coughs> prove that the greatest prime factor of a polynomial is greater than the trivial bound, and Hule use it extensively. So, <coughs> so the idea is to, to study the sum Sn, which is the sum of log of C, or I can write it AB plus 1, where a double sum, A belongs to A, B belongs to B, and uh, to simplify, I shall write, suppose A equals to B. And it's not difficult to using, uh, I say that, uh, uh, the, the logarithm is going so slowly that you may suppose that all N and B are uh, around capital N, and it's not so difficult. You prove that this. 1 plus so easy and now we use convolution which is to say that log is the long Mang von Mangold function multiplied by the one and so when you use that you have another possibility which you write it as so I replace very it's you have almost this identity, so believe me, as usual, the power of prime are negligible. Uh, so I write P, and here 
So you write <coughs> AB plus 1 congruent to 0 mod P. So you, you use this property. And of course, uh, uh, you see that P divides AB plus 1. So you will stop at the greatest prime factors. Okay? And uh, what, what we arrive, we will give an upper bound for S of N. And we will uh, see how it behaves with this other, uh, yes, with this other upper bound. So there are always, when you use a Chebyshev Hule method, there are always uh, uh, two regions, small p, and in, the, in this sum, you see, in this sum, we will have to insert what we know, the poor properties that we know about divisibility. As I said, since I wrote nothing on the blackboard as property, you are to find uh, ad hoc methods. So for small p and large p. Here, what is small p? Small p corresponds to p less than capital N. You see, N, and we, you see the P, P plus, you must have in mind that it will be uh, N1 plus uh, something. Okay? And here we use, uh, it's, it's absolutely not difficult, it's a lemma due to Stewart. When I write it, you may think it's something like large shift. No, no, it's not large shift. So, log of p, so I sum p less than capital N, sum k less log n over log p, sum h uh, modulo p power k, and the cardinality of a belonging to capital A, a congruent to h modulo p k, uh, square. So uh, <coughs> you take your set E, uh, yes, your set A, I recall, it's included in 1 N. You square the number of A which belongs to an, uh, such an arithmetic progression. You sum over uh, the module, uh, the class. So forget this k. It's not uh, it's not important. And you sum over p, and you obtain this uh, bound a a minus one plus pi of n. As you know, it's the uh, cardinality of p less than n, the prime, multiplied by log n. So, uh, what can I say? Is it this upper bound which is easy, as only you develop and somewhere, and you, you take easy calculus, it's rather sharp. So you can test it if you take for a equals 1n. But you see, you, you, may, you may see w w what was the origin of, so you remember, I suppose that A greater than N divided by log N power delta, and delta has been, it is the origin. That means if A is less than the number of prime, this term will uh, be most important, and the quality of this identity, of this inequality is completely uh, uh, empty. So this lemma of Stewart, okay? we use it to solve for small p. For large p, so what do I mean? So I want to sum p between n and p plus, and I have the, so uh, forget log p, I write it like, like a, a constant if you want. Log p is so smooth. And then I insert, uh, yes. Modulo P. Modulo P. So, and here I shall, I have, uh, I, the situation is completely blocked. So what you say is a trick which is, I will not dare to say that it comes from a, uh, Directly. <laughs> so you write this AB plus 1 equals PM. Okay? And you write it like 
this implies this quantity that PM uh, is congruent to one mod A. P1 is con PM is congruent to one mod A. So when I write this, I lose the property of B. I'm obliged to do that. I only use the property that it is included in one N. Okay? And that's uh, otherwise you can do nothing. And now we arrive at the following situation. Um, yes, so uh, you must be, so you have PM plus one congruent to zero mod A. So here, what happened is that A, the size of A is uh, around N, say, the size. And here you have PM, the product is around N squared. So you are, uh, in some sense, you, are, uh, you want some knowledge of the behavior of PM plus one in arithmetic uh, congruent to zero mod A and what you have in mind. So here you are happy because P is a prime, M is a usual integer, A is, an, is in my crazy sequence, but the size does not fit. As soon you think, oh yes, there is convolution here, and you think about bombieri vinogradov type theorem. But, 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 what is very annoying, it is this situation that the A is N, and A is not, uh, is not, suppose N, I would write N square power 1R divided by log N power. If we have this situation, the story is finished. We would be exactly in bombieri vinogradov theorem. So we are very on the edge of what to do. Uh, so here is really the difficult part of the, the proof is to produce some uh, bombieri vinogradov not bombieri uh, slightly greater than n divided by a power of logarithm. So here is the, the lemma, so, or a proposition. So it, it is very general, and it took a lot of time for me to prove it. So you are summing, so so uh, P, M less than some x, PM congruent to one mod Q. Okay? So you are counting PM less than x in some arithmetic progression, and you block the size of P, and you want to approximate it, but one over phi of Q, uh, the, the, what we call the expected main term, PM less than X. So what? So I write it like, if you want, expected main term. So <coughs> at what what you can prove, and you sum an average, and what we are able to prove, it is less than uh, yes. So. It's, So let x less than y less 3, q squared less and less like than, than uniformly for p1 less than p2 less than x. We have this bound which is, uh, uh, and there exists b1 uh, absolute. So, if you understand the meaning of this equality, you are quite good. <laughs> so, what I want to say is, when it is uh, 
when it has a value, this bound, what is trivial is uh, this thing is trivial. This bound, you know, that <coughs> it's easy to see. It's x log x. Okay, trivial, that means I uh, really trivial. So here you beat this bound is better than this as soon as log of y, uh, yes, as soon some value as soon as uh, log y call small o of log x, okay? So this bound is less than the trivial bound as soon as log y is small o of log x. That means y, uh, you are not allowed to take y is equal 1. You are not allowed to do that. So when you have that, here you see that you can take q, suppose, to, to you have in mind y equals x uh, uh, to give you square root of log x, for instance. This is a good choice. Here you can take this and you see that u can be slightly larger than the square root of x. So you insert this property and you, I would say you finish the computation and it's, uh, the proof is finished. So the, uh, I would say some word about this. <coughs> so the, the paper is on archive and 20 pages are done to to prove it. So I want to, uh, to stress its origin. Its origin is the paper of Bombieri, Friedlander, Ivanietz. It is in Mathematische Annalen. Around, uh, around this year. So they prove uh, the same, something really around. And here they put pi of x q1, suppose, so forth. This is the number of primes. This is the number of prime. Uh, Same upper bound, same thing. And here also, q less than x, y. So, of course, I, it, has a, it was highly inspired by, uh, my work was highly inspired by this one. But it's not trivial to pass from, you cannot integrate by part or something like that. No, no, no. You have to enter the proof. So, uh, so to, some comments about this. I insist about this year, about around this year. So this type of result initiated by uh, myself and Ivaniet, and after Bombieri, Friedlander, Ivaniet, and is always the same. It was a purpose to go beyond one half in Bombieri Vinogradov theorem exponent. So we use dispersion, so it's almost 30 years ago. And uh, <coughs> what were the main tools? The main tools were dispersion and use of a Clusterman sum on average, that means some result of that type. S, M, and C, and you sum over C, you sum over M, okay, and a good bound. So it's what we call, so first tool, dispersion, second tool, Clusterman sum on average. So 
it is uh, starting from uh, Kuznetsov, and then I lay uh, uh, pushed and uh, generalized by Desouye and Ivaniets. And now there are so many applications of this result, and it gives birth what we call cluster mania. So this thing, ah, uh, and there is another ingredient for this proof and this one. It is the intrusion of algebraic geometry. That means I will call it the link theory. And uh, that means to bound exponential sum in dimension two. Uh, it's not correct, but suppose, uh, what do you say about fx of y divided by p, you sum x modulo p, y modulo p, and you want, f is a polynomial, and you want something that capital of so this one is necessary for this work and also for this work. If we had not, uh, we could not do that. So you see the, this theorem, you are, we are just at q equals x one half plus small o of one, and uh, <coughs> bombieri Vinogradov itself is not improved. So uh, to, to finish, so it, it came, uh, so it's 30 years ago, this story, and I was very surprised that almost no one worked on, uh, on this subject to follow, improve, and so on. I don't know. Maybe it's too, the computation are a nightmare. And, uh, but the, my, po my point of view, changed completely since uh, something like one year. So you know about Zhang, Zhang proof about bounded gap between prime. So what is crucial is a special <coughs> type of uh, bombieri vinogradov theorem with a, a special type, where the third point of view is quite crucial. And, uh, and now we know by uh, minor it's useless to, to have some type of bombieri vinogradov with that uh, expand. So we must be careful what you call bombieri vinogradov because it depends the type of Q on which you are summing. And uh, quite new, I must uh, insist, I am happy about that, a French, a young French mathematician proved the following thing. And uh, he's a student of De La Bretagne. So as soon as you go to the disper dispersion and so on, all the examples were made with sequences which have cardinality greater than x log x minus a. You see, uh, big sequences, I say. And he proved the following result. So, uh, uh, so I write, so we go to the kingdom of smooth number. So this is n less than x, p divides n implies p less than y. So I am counting integer for which all the prime divisors are small. So, so this is the same thing, but you impose n to be co-prime with q, and psi x q a is equal to the same condition, but you impose n congruent to a mod q. So uh, here is the result of drapeau. So psi x y q1 minus psi x y q divided by phi of q. You see you are counting in arithmetic progression at what is the expected main term. And then he has, so I, write, I do not write, I write acceptable. I, okay? And uh, he's summing up to 3 fifths minus epsilon. So 3 fifths is much more than 1 half, but we have already such, uh, such uh, example with an i exponent of distribution. And what is more important, because there is a second parameter which, which is y. 
and uh, when y is large, it's easy. And <laughs> he proves that uniformly for uh, uniformly for y greater than log x to power some c c absolute. So suppose uh, you have, uh, let us write 10 power 10, okay? Okay. But what is important is that psi x uh, log x power c, its cardinality is about x1, 1 minus capital C plus capital O of 1. You see? So even if uh, c is very large, you have, he is proving some bombier vinogradov theorem for a sequence which is much thinner. You see, it's a huge gap when the cardinality is something like x0.9999 and, so, and so on. And uh, yeah, so it's, these are good news for the theory. So I'm almost finished. And two, two uh, questions is about, I had discussion with people here, what about? smooth number in the set a, b plus 1. And my, my, my uh, perception of the question is what concerns smooth number is much more delicate than what concerns prime. Thank you. Sorry.